So we're going to summarize. Um, let's, let's summarize where we are. Is an HMO right for me? So this is a summary from our point of view. Um, yeah, so we're just going to go through now um, the, the key points of why we think a HMO is right for me. So mm. uh, I'll go point one, shall I? Let's do it. Yeah, let's okay, cool. Point so one, point two. if you want a high yielding property, you're aware of the extra work and you're prepared to work harder to earn more cash flow, then yes, HMOs are possibly for you. Yeah. Um, if you want let and forget, um, probably standard buy to lets are for you. Um, HMO has got more management time. It's more complex to find them, renovate them, or complex to find them, buy them, renovate them, manage them, finance. If you just want simple standard buy to let, then that might be for you. Yep, perfect. If you want the pros without the cons, consider using a property sourcer with a combined let and management service, such as, do you know anyone who does that? I don't know, who, who would do that? Do you do that? <laughs> okay, yeah, who would you? Yeah, I can do that. Um, we have a team of property sources and renovation managers that can uh, source a property for you and convert it. And then we have uh, experienced, actually, 140 years worth of combined Ooh, yeah, lettings ex yeah. and management experience who will be able to guide you through the process and take the majority of the workload away from you. That's up. a sales pitch, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, almost like <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like you're reading that one at the end. Yeah. It's like, Shall we say this at the end? Because yeah. this is a good thing. So, so actually, all seriousness, um, there's, 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 a, there's a few bits here that we thought we'd... Right, let's break down. Like, if you've got... And we know that we've got clients with different cash pots. Or, you know, whether you're a client or not, this isn't specifically for clients. You know that. Uh, if you've got somewhere between... 50 to 150,000 pounds sat there, but this is, this is the other determining factor, isn't it? HMOs are more expensive. Single lets, a lot cheaper to get into. The main reason is the cost of putting them together. You buy a single let, it's cheaper to buy, little renovation, rent it out. An HMO is a bigger house, it's more expensive, a massive ex uh, expense on the you know renovation cost. Mm. 50K 50, plus. 50 grand plus, could be mm. 100 grand to do the whole thing, including all the furniture. And that's got to be done in cash. You yeah. can remortgage it afterwards, but you can't buy your beds and furniture on, on, on the initial mortgage. So yeah. you know, if you've got between 50 and 100, we're just trying to get this realistic here. If you've got between 50 and 150,000 pounds cash pot, you could buy a ready-made HMO and give it a light refresh. We talked about mm. the potential pitfalls of that. Do you want to remind people? Yeah. You know, so, you when know, you look most at people only sell an existing HMO because there's maybe an issue there with it. Maybe they've had bad tenants, bad leaks, something's always been going wrong or the licensing rules are changing locally. As I mentioned in Hull, we're actually sourcing for a client at the minute who's got, a, it's actually similar to that. Um, he wants to buy a ready-made HMO. Dean, my um, sourcer in Hull, is, is finding one for him. Um, and he's got a couple of options actually already, yeah. but... Um, it's rare yeah. that an HMO landlord sells a good yeah. HMO. No, just but be aware. Yeah, you might account. find. So yeah, the likelihood if, is if this guy's band, a retiring landlord or just yeah. wants to just, he's just got a bit sick of it because it is ten. hard work. Dean's having to yeah. go through it to find the right, the right landlord. Yeah. So just before, one other mm -hmm. thing, um, we do all our property sourcing to order, um, whether that's single X or HMOs, and we sit down with clients and we have what I call a one-to-one -one sort of planning buy to order session and we assess a client's well suitability like, can you actually afford it are you ready for it should this be what you be doing now um, um, and we go through it so we make sure that we're going to source you the right house I love hearing those conversations mm. right? sometimes I'm sat in the, across the other side of the desk when Adam's talking and the, the amount of times 30% yeah, of times when Adam can have a conversation and bear in mind with property sources you want to sell a deal but Adam would put a landlord off from doing yeah, this. Well, gotcha. You need to do this, yeah. isn't it? That's, that's a great piece of ad, advice that we're given and, you know, keeping every happy, safe. I don't think mm. this is for you because you said this and this. I think you should do something like that. Go away and consider it. That's a, a, you know, One of the things it. I'd be saying is, yeah. like this point here, if you've got 150 to 250K, yes, you can do a buy to order HMO. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's always worth having a nice chat because, you know, it's a chat. Conversation's free, isn't it? And, yeah, get, get, get... Um, Get that benefit of Adam's advice. If you've got somewhere between 150 and 250, so slightly more, it opens everything up. Now you've got to be buying in the right areas, like we, like we talked about, and, and you know you can definitely there's areas in the country where people consider where you can't even buy the house for 250,000 pounds. It's you know 
500 grand house. And we find clients that, don't know, I, I can't ever see it working really well. No. You know, buying, spending half a million quid on a house and putting 200 grand renovation on it and then renting out six rooms. There's not many places in the country where that's going to be right. Anyway. Definitely not getting a commercial loan on that one. No. So 150 <laughs> to 250 grand cash pot, you can build a build to order HMO. So that is, you can find the house, buy it in cash, renovate it into an HMO, make it all compliant, and you've got it. So with, that, with about that amount of money, you can do that. And for me, building an HMO is, um, is preferable. You know it's compliant. It's usually cheaper. Much cheaper. It's usually cheaper. Um, when you if you want to sell your HMO, you'll, you'll sell it. The specialist HMO estate agents, and they get good prices usually to foreign investors, and you'll get well over yeah. what you're getting it valued for when you put the mortgage on it. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. some of our clients mm. have yeah thought is it is it a flip strategy to buy a property, put it into an HMO, rent it, get it all up and running for three months, and then sell it on. And I've seen some well, there's people companies some money to do that. that yeah. yeah, but that you can only do that if you're going to build it toward if you buy one off the shelf it's already there tart it up yeah yeah all of a sudden you find there's some hidden costs because you know it's not just tarting up it needs fireboarding over there and that needs that and that needs that and you spend more than you think really it doesn't really seem. build no. to order makes sense and then final point and this is sort of the dream position if you've got half a million pounds plus it is definitely uh, feasible to say i can replace my income obviously it depends what your income is but yeah it'll give you a comfortable retirement salary if you can do that Typically speaking, you'd be buying two or three HMOs in one hit. Adam can find them for you, get them renovated, get them rented out. You'll own them in cash. Mm. And then at that point, you'd want to maybe stick. Maybe that's enough. Maybe, maybe you know, seven, six to seven thousand pound profit because you've not got the mortgage might work. Mm. Or if you want to go again, refinance them once, buy if you bought three, buy two more. If you bought two, buy one more. Whatever, whatever the numbers work out, you end up with yeah. three to six HMOs. Some finance, some not. But if you've got that five hundred thousand pounds, you can def- you can retire on it. And, and that that's the that is the the dream ticket for lots of people who come to Adam and say, "Sort me out, will you? I've just sold my business. I'm retiring. Got a lump sum. Get me an income every month so that I can relax." At that point, you've got choices, haven't you? You can. Buy some more HMOs, buy some of the single lets, but the, the the trick there is it's quick. Yeah, indeed. Um, if you want to get to that income on single buy to lets, it's going to take you three, four, five years. You would want to do it on HMOs, if, depending on how much money you got, you can do it in a year, 18 months, two years. And that, typically speaking, if you want to disappear off into the sunset, that's your time scale. There we go. I just noticed I've got a really nice look. <laughs> I've got a little note from my daughter. Was it my daughter or my wife? I don't know. Um, any questions? Nice. Have we got questions? No okay. questions today. Right. Cool. Very All right, nice. guys. Thanks for sticking with us to the end. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much. Everybody have a lovely weekend. 